that was too much, you know? And I remember saying to my agent at one point, wow, you know, I'd love to just find a balance. And she said to me, oh, you want a balance too. Oh, <laughs> so I heard recently, actually the wonderful woman CEO of PepsiCo um, say that it's impossible as a working mother, wife, to find balance, but it is a constant juggling act and that, and that it is. But apart from that, in terms of wanting to continue as an actress, I was thrilled to meet with Mark Cherry. I was thrilled that he said, well, I didn't know. The fans again were all over the internet saying they wanted me to go on Desperate Housewives. And, and we met and he said, I know. He said, I know they do. But he said, it's, it is, you don't know this, but it's the last season. It's already written and it's already shot. But he said, I have a new show coming up. And so he thought of me for that. What was that like when you first read the part for Jean Viev? Oh. Delator. <laughs> Thank you for remembering that name. I thought to myself, oh. hmm, if I'm going to follow Erica Kane, Jean Viev Delator is a pretty, pretty good name, at least. And I didn't, I went out to read for Mark because that's part of, I went out to LA to read for Mark. Uh, and the producer, and that's part of his process, which I get, you know, it's one thing to like someone's work, and it's another thing to um, know if you can work together and how that will be. And so I was in uh, their offices and uh, I didn't know how he was gonna pronounce it. I mean, I was just reading, nobody told me it was Jean Vieve. I thought, is it Genevieve? What, how, how is that gonna be? And I walked into his office and before we, we did the scene, he and the stage manager and I did the scene. He, um, he said, well, jean the blah, blah, and jean Viev said, oh, Mark, you have just told me so much about this character just by the way you pronounce her name. It was, it was uh, a great experience. I, I loved doing it. And I thought I love this so much that even if I don't get the part at the end of the day, I loved doing this. It was so much fun. Another great part, right? jean Viev was... Phenomenal. I mean, the whole show, again, great cast, total ensemble, but jean Viev was just a fan favorite right from the beginning. Oh, thank you. I, I'm so happy to, to, you know, that surprised me about Erica too, because Erica was the naughty girl in town and uh, I, I liked her. I, I thought I wanted to play her, but um, I didn't know if anybody else would. I was, I was only supposed to be on every other Tuesday in the beginning, you know, just to stir the pot. But um yeah, the fans embraced her. And yes, they they embraced jean Viev, which was great. If jean Viev and Erica had gotten um, like a tassel of some sort, it's not physical, just like a power of wits, who, who would win? Who's better at <laughs> manipulating? Uh, well, first of all, it might have been physical, <laughs> but um, Erica would have won. I think she was the one who had the um, the street smarts too. jean Viev more was living in a Beverly Hills bubble. Um, behind the, the gates and uh, Zoila was the realist and uh, jean Viev was just, you know, in her own world. And, you know, there's all this talk today with all these shows about like diversity and inclusion and like so many shows have come so far. You look at like Shonda Rhimes and Ryan Murphy, but, you know, I mean, it wasn't 20 years ago, but Devious Maids I put in the category of a show that was technically ahead of its time. That Yes. Yes. I agree with you. And, and, uh, in the case of uh, Lee Jean Viev and Zoila, um, Zoila was the one with all the uh, intelligence about how you live your life. You know, it was Jean Viev who was out there. Zoila really ran that house, didn't she? Oh, she sure did. She sure did. But I have to say, one of my favorite scenes I ever got to play was the opening scene of Jean Viev under the bed uh, in her mansion. Uh, crying uh, because she felt like she was she was losing her life and uh, her son and daughter, uh, well, not her daughter, but Zoila's daughter and Zoila had to talk her off a ledge. That was a classic scene. Mm -hmm. Another highlight for me of your career, you talk about things you did during All My Children was the last season of Dallas. Oh. Uh, Dallas was a great show, a great With show. A great show. And again, one the fans adored. Uh, it was what everyone talked about around the water cooler, if you will, you know. And uh, yeah, they called and asked if I would like to do the last um, uh, bit of Dallas. And uh, we have to shoot in Paris. Are, are you want to do that? And so, you know, 
oh, let, let me think about this. Right. <laughs> I was like, yes, I want to do that. So we, we went to Paris and uh, it was August actually. And um, it was, it was a wonderful experience in many, many ways. Uh, Patrick Duffy is who I worked with mostly. And he was a doll. Uh, his family was there. Uh, he had teenage boys. Uh, our children were younger, and so they weren't with us, but my husband was with me. And I had some wonderful experiences, of course, doing the show, but it was also Fashion Week in Paris. And so Patrick and I got to go to a couple of shows. And I, nice. had, I hadn't been to anything like that before. It was spectacular. And also, I got to go to Chanel in Paris. Uh, there's more than one, but I went to the one I had been told about. And um, for the first time, I bought something from Chanel uh, there. But while I was there, um, excuse me, my phone is ringing. I'm here on my own right now. You can get it if you need to. Uh, do you want me to stop it from ringing? Yeah, I, 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 no, I mean, it's up to you. It doesn't bother me. Okay. I can edit it out. Oh, great. Um, anyway, so I was in Chanel uh, by myself. My husband uh, was uh, playing golf and it was a really hot, hot day, but it was August. And so I saw something I liked very much. And, uh, but I had never bought anything from Chanel before. So I asked the saleswoman uh, if she could hold it until my husband met me in about an hour. And I wanted him to see it too and see what he thought. And she said, um, yes, I can do that. And she was holding the things up. And as she moved away to go put them on the side, she revealed that Sophia Loren was sitting in the chair at the cash register, cashier, saleswoman, whatever, uh, sitting in a chair. As I said, it was so hot. Sophia Loren is someone I admired my whole life and still do. In any case, she was sitting there in this hot summer day. I can tell you, I still remember. She was more beautiful in person. She had on a sky blue silk dress with a low neckline, like square and elbow length sleeves. And she was gorgeous. And I was so thrilled because when you see someone you've idolized so much, I was not a bit disappointed. In fact, as I said, she was more beautiful. And we were the only people in the shop because it was August in Paris, everyone was gone. Uh, in any case, I, I didn't want to interrupt her private time. Um, so, but I could feel my face. I was smiling. Of course, I adored her. And um, she must have felt someone smiling and she looked up and she smiled and then I left because I said I didn't want to speak. I probably couldn't have spoken. I was so thrilled to see her. Do you ever regret not saying something to her? You know, I had a chance a couple of years later to um, be in her company. Uh, several years later, I was at the White House, actually, um, for a state dinner for, uh, for the um, president of Italy. And um, I was in the, um, I think, the East Room. And Bill Clinton was, was the president at the time. And when my husband and I arrived, we were given envelopes where, where our, which tables we were at. We were not put at the same table. My husband was at table one. I was at table 10. And my husband looked at the envelopes and he said, oh, honey, I'm sorry. There must be some mistake. And that I'm at table one and you're at table 10. And as we went into the room, um, he took me to my seat at table 10, which turned out to be the president's table right there. Uh, center. And he was at table one, as he will tell you, way off in the boonies by the kitchen door. <laughs> right. Which, you know, I said, oh, honey, now I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, so I was seated at the president's table. At the table next to me with Hillary Clinton, who was then the first lady, uh, was Sophia Loren. And I hadn't seen her since I saw her for the first time in Paris. This was the second and the only other time I saw her. She had on a red gown. She had just flown in. She looked stunning as always. And then we were introduced and then I could say how much I admired her. Did you say, you know, we've met before kind of one day in Paris at in Chanel? No, I don't think I, you know, I, I, I think there were other people who were taking her attention. I was just one of the throngs you know, saying, aren't you wonderful? I love you. What about the other way around? Like when people come up to you, I mean, like, have you ever had like a strange fan interaction and like, you know, does that get overwhelming at times? I would imagine, you know, there's so many 
You have so many fans. Erica has so many fans. And do people confuse the two also? Like, do people come up to you not realizing that you're Susan Lucci and you've done so many other things, Broadway, written books, like <laughs> you're, you're not Erica Kane? Um, you know, first of all, I've been very lucky. I, I can, you know, count on one hand with fingers left over the, the odd experiences I've had. Um, people are mostly very enthusiastic and really warm and very informed. Wow, people have such a good memory. And, uh, and their passion is the same as that we were still on the air, which helped me get through that whole morning period. I knew I didn't have to leave her behind, that she was still with us, much like you would mourn you know, a loved one. You realize right. they're, they're still with you. They'll always be with you. And that, that was a help. And the fans have helped me, helped me through that. Um, you know, that's, that's been a great thing.